it is beyond unacceptable to be played at your own game. He'd managed to recruit us without our knowledge and without our consent. Clearly, you're not the man. <laughs> Situations like this force you to question yourself. The problem with the question is that I can't be trusted to give the answer. I'm a professional liar. The phone call could have ruined us, but Nap and I were two dogs that just found a bone, and we had information that he didn't know existed. Longbody didn't trust a single one of his clients. His client list was small, just three in fact, one of which he referred to as bagpipes. The real Hadrian brothers, the man on the phone, endeavoured to keep his identity a secret, but uncovering secrets is Longbody's job. We combed through the stolen notes, meticulously organised for years. Interesting name, innit? Bagpipes. The more we read, the more familiar we were with him. Fascinated individual, up to all sorts of naughty things. Lots of interests he had. He was even into art, and on the 27th of April 2003, he tasked Longbody with investigating a stolen painting, a Van Gogh, no less, which he was going to use for the deal. The man who originally hired us to investigate his blackmailer, Squeezebox, the real Hadrian Brothers. At least, this will be told the others. A simple rumour reinforced by these videos. That stolen piece of art given to Squeezebox, on which everything else was finally balanced. It was a risk that relied on the competency of thieves who turned out to be amateurs. The day after arranging our deal with Squeezebox, the real paintings were recovered. Longbody, however, did not inform Squeezebox that our painting was a fake. Instead, he went to great lengths to tell him it was genuine. Longbody, the master of impersonation, known to some as the snake, has been making moves and whispering rumours of his own. I'm sitting in this room because of it. The fact that I'm telling you this story is crucial to his ending. Reciting these facts publicly is at the very heart of the story itself, and what you choose to believe is a decision I leave to you. Make no mistake, I am a liar. The only difference between you and I is that I accept it. I can tell you truthfully that there's nothing more glorious than writing your future ahead of time. If you want to know how it's done, first place. What if, in reality, we found him? As the town fair hit peak capacity, we forced the investigator to follow Nap through the busy crowds. Meanwhile, I broke into the investigator's car and took everything. His documents, his notes, his laptops, his hard drives, and all his burner phones. Taking advantage of the overcrowded fair while being followed, Nap even pickpocketed the investigator's phone. Two broken hands he had. Now that's the professional. The investigator never really found us. We lured him there with the simplest of deceptions. The trick to simple is subtle. There are two primary choices in life. To accept conditions as they exist, or to accept the responsibility for changing them. After taking everything of worth from that investigator, we set his car alight. A glorious fire it was. Not quite the roaring stampede we'd escaped from, but at least our work had a fucking leash on it. 
we searched through his stuff, hoping to find information that would lead us to the man responsible for trying to burn us alive. It didn't take long to find the number of his client. It's a difficult task convincing others to take the blame for your own wrongdoings. Just as the magician needs to divert attention, so does the con man. Some magic tricks require an audience. After all, there's no disappearing act without someone to witness it. At the very least, someone needs to believe you were there in the first place for there to be any trick at all. Some tricks are simple sleight of hand. Two weeks ago, we told our blackmail targets that Squeezebox was the Hadrian brothers and we let them do the rest. Some tricks are complex disappearances. With Squeezebox gone and these narrative videos made public, greed and desperation have pushed and permitted criminals to use our name, the Hadrian brothers. Squeezebox hired us to investigate ourselves. The perfect position to frame the scapegoats for our own blackmail on him. They made a deal together, but his deal with the scapegoats to own us like dogs was really a deal with us to end him. Squeezebox, the poacher, is dead. The scapegoats are dead. The simplicity of this story is an essential part of the bigger picture. Even as you watch this, more and more opportunists claim the criminal alias of the Hadrian Brothers. It's now impossible to discern who the Hadrian Brothers actually are, who we are, and because of this, we are free. Free to leave the game with a trail so dirty, we cannot be traced. Time to begin our little story. Fourteen days ago, the Hadrian brothers were killed. We don't care who did it, and we don't care who replaced them, because we are free to leave the game unknown. For the sake of our continued anonymity, You'll know me in these events as John, and my brother as Nap. Long live the Adrian Brothers. This book, the most essential part of our plan. We call it the insurance list. It's a perfect tool for a perfect crime, and we're stealing it. There should only be two insurance lists of this kind in existence. The owner of the second will soon be dead, but someone has a third. <laughs> <laughs> 